Now I got news for you. The resurrected king, you've given him all your prayers. He said, by the spirit I will rise, right? Mm -hmm. The resurrected king has victory all the time. Yes. Even when your circumstance looks like it's failing, Amen. he still got victory. Yes. Even when your situation looks like you ain't got it, it ain't gonna happen, or it's all over. He still got the victory. Amen. Amen. We need to remember that. I don't even know what Mike's preaching on, but I'm real excited about it. Tammy, you want to come and pray to start the service? <laughs> Lord, you are so vast, miraculous, marvelous, awesome, kind, caring, loving. We just thank you for your grace and your mercy this morning. We ask, Lord, that you be honored in our midst. We invite you to come to fellowship with us. That we bless your name today. We want to lift those, Lord, that aren't here today and just know that no matter where we're at on the planet, we're not lost from you. As the word says, you leave, you leave the 99 and chase down the one. And I just thank you that you go to each and every person that's not here today and I remind them whose they are. Yes. And I just pray that you bless this time and that we are able to bless you, Lord. In Jesus' name, amen. All right, we got some birthdays. That's where you want me to start, right? Birthdays? It's on a paper. I know. It's on the paper. It's on the paper. <laughs> Order service. All right, Slater. It's your birthday, huh? Man, all right. It was the 19th. Hey, can you come stand by Mike and I'll sing happy birthday to you? Or I'll come right down there where you are. <laughs> oh. <laughs> Let's sing. Well, before I, before we sing Happy Birthday to Slater, I want to announce the other birthdays that we have, okay? Gail Stevens' birthday. Man, that's today, right? Yep. Yeah. Pastor Gary Silva's birthday is today. And my uncle David West's birthday is today. So we're going to sing Happy Birthday to all of them. You know, David. Let's sing happy birthday to them. And I'm sure because they're musically inclined, they'll be like, that was terrible. No, but that's okay. Happy birthday. Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday, God bless you. Happy birthday to you. Now, now, now you got to tell everybody how old you are. He said eight. <laughs> he said he's eight. Uh, I want to remind everybody that uh, the prayer request box is in the hallway. If you have a prayer request before you leave today, go ahead and put it in there. Uh, I have a few people on the top of my list right now. Paul Thomas, Shelly Ditton, and family, Susan Cisco, the Garrison family, the Benson family, and I'm going to say Teresa Hargis and her family, we're going to pray for you before you leave. Okay? Uh, also, I uh, want to make an announcement that this, not, ne not this Sunday, next Sunday, uh, Annual open business meeting is set for Sunday, May 31st, after the morning service. If unable to make it, uh, we'll attempt a Zoom meeting, okay? We'll try to set up a Zoom for everybody who can't be here in person or whatever. Uh, I'm not sure if Brian's here or will be able to make it, but since they're on the board, we'll make sure that they're able to attend the meeting anyway. Uh, Memorial weekend is... This is Memorial Weekend, obviously, and the Memorial Day is tomorrow, and uh, we have a video that we want to watch, and after that, I want to make another last special announcement, okay? Okay.
Yeah, turn it up. I said then that there is a special sadness that accompanies the death of the servicemen. But we're never quite good enough to them. Not really, we can't be. Because what they gave us is beyond our powers to repay. So when a serviceman dies, it's a tear in the fabric, a break in the hole. All we can do is remember. It is, in a way, an odd thing to honor those who died in defense of our country, in defense of us in wars far away. The imagination plays a trick. We see these soldiers in our mind as old and wise. We see them as something like the founding fathers, gray and gray-haired. But most of them were boys when they died, and they gave up two lives, the one they were living and the one they would have lived. When they died, they gave up their chance to be husbands and fathers and grandfathers. They gave up their chance to be revered old men. They gave up everything for our country, for us. We owe them a debt we can never repay. All we can do is remember them, what they did, and why they had to be brave for us. make my announcement after that because we want to honor those who have given their life for this country. There's many in my family who did and I'm sure there's people in your families who have. The reason that in America we have the freedom that we have today to come into this place and to celebrate three years of being open as a church as a body of believers is because in America we have the right to do that. In other countries they're underground and they're hiding and it's door to door and person to person. But in America we have the right to freely assemble and worship God. And there have been men and women for hundreds of years now who have died to make sure that we keep that right. Amen. One of the reasons I went ahead and opened service again, even before we had the quote unquote approval, is because we have a First Amendment right to freely assemble and we need to exercise it. Amen. Amen. But I want to tell you tomorrow is Memorial Day, but it's also the three year anniversary of Agape Fellowship Church. Amen. 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 I know there's a bunch of people that ain't here today. But I'm telling you what, man, this has been a wild three years. It's been God doing all kinds of crazy stuff, one right after another. Amen. Amen. And he's not done yet. Amen. Lady's got a good thing going on in this prayer meeting. I'm telling you what, if, you ain't, if you're a lady and not involved in the prayer meeting, you need to get involved. Amen. Amen. If you can or if you want to. Okay? If you're led to. I ain't. I ain't I'm not, I'm not Caesar up here decreeing things. I'm just saying you probably ought to, okay? It'd be a good thing. Judy went this last week at a great time. Amen. Called Tammy, talked to Tammy. Tammy kind of calls me and lets me know what's going on with the prayer group. That's awesome. Amen. Hey, I'm telling you what, it's important when you give people a position, let them do it. Let them do the job. Amen. Tammy got Tammy and Barb and Roberta got the prayer team and they're going all all out with it. Amen. Amen. It's a good thing. We got a bunch of good things going. And when all this stuff is over and everybody starts coming back, we got a whole bunch more stuff that we're going to be doing. Uh, we bought the paint sprayer that we needed to start spraying the rubber roofing on the building. So we're going to start getting this thing watertight. That's my other announcement. I almost forgot about that. Yeah. We got, we got a $700 machine 
for $270. Amen. We have $700 received for $274, I think it was. So that's that's bargain basement price right there. Okay. I'll take it every day. Amen. But we're going to uh, start getting the roof all patched up by ourselves. I'm not paying $40,000 to nobody to go and do that when I can do it for less. Amen. Uh, but that's my announcements. And before, before we have our uh, message today, I want to thank my very best friend, Mike, for sticking by me and Carmen for three years of the God Play Fellowship Church. I appreciate it, and I love you. Everybody give my a hand. We love you, Pastor. Pastor Tommy. Yeah. Amen. Thank you. Well, uh, I probably look like I can pop a balloon in my head. <laughs> but don't worry, I did not stick my tongue in the post. <laughs> I stand before you this morning dressed up I blame my pastor. <laughs> it, it's not his fault this day, but notice I didn't say it's his fault. I just said I blame him. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. Uh, uh, the topic I'm preaching on this morning is redemption. If you are if you are redeemed, say so. Amen. So, 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 yeah. <laughs> I'm all the rest is good, my <laughs> That's so. what the scripture says. Let the redeemed of the Lord say so. Amen. Amen. Uh, first, looking at the word redemption in Psalms chapter 111, verse nine, it says. He sent redemption into his people. He has commanded his covenant forever. Forever is an interesting word. A world without end. We can't fathom what forever is. But there are two places of eternity, and everybody will spend eternity somewhere. In whether be separated from God or with God. Luke chapter 21, verse 28 says, When you see him, these things come, when, when you see these things come to pass, look up for your redemption draws near. Yeah. <clears throat> Psalms one hundred and 30 verse 7 says let Israel hope in the Lord for with the Lord there is mercy and plenteous redemption Amen. it's not lacking there's God. no shortage all sufficient redemption amen. all sufficient amen uh, Ephesians chapter 1 verse 7 says in whom we have redemption through his blood, the forgiveness of sins according to his riches. Excuse me. Uh, Ephesians, Ephesians chapter 4, verse 30. Uh, sorry. You're all right, man. Don't worry about it. They listen to you, right? I was, I was. I was awake until I, I was preparing until after two o'clock this morning. It's it, it's not because I'm I'm not normally a preacher. It, it's not because I'm not normally a, a public speaker. That's that's my story, and I'm sticking to it. <laughs> uh, Ephesians chapter four verse thirty says, "And grieve not the Holy Spirit of God, whereby." You are sealed into the day of redemption. Ooh, come on. And this is the one I want to focus on the most for right now. Uh, 
Romans chapter 3, verse 23, verse 25. It says, For all have sinned to come short of the glory of God, being justified freely by His grace through the redemption that is in Christ Jesus, whom God has set forth to be a propitiation through faith in His blood, to declare His righteousness for the remission of sin that are passed through the forbearance of God. There were some words there that I wasn't clear on meaning of, so I looked them up. Forbearance. What? I like definition. Come on, man. I'm excited. Forbearance means the action of refraining from exercising a large right. Because none of us are worthy because we were all sinful. And God is the judge. Jesus came to the cross that we didn't have to. He did that for us because he loves us. Amen. He could have threw in the towel and said, Father, we're not worthy. Propitiation means to appease God or an appeasement towards God. Remission in that context is forgiveness of sins. The next word I'm looking at is Redeemer. In Job chapter 19, verse 25, it says, For I know that my Redeemer lives. And that he shall stand at the what stand at the latter day upon the earth. Amen. Psalms chapter nineteen, verse fourteen says, Let the words of my mouth and the meditation of my heart be acceptable in your sight, O Lord, my strength and my redeemer. Amen. Isaiah says it like this in chapter forty seven, verse four. As for our redeemer, the Lord of hosts is his name, the Holy One of Israel. Jeremiah agrees in chapter 50 of verse 34. Their Redeemer is strong. The Lord of hosts is his name. He shall thoroughly plead their cause that he may give rest to the land and disquiet the inhabitants of Babylon. Amen. The definition of disquiet means to make someone worry. Or feel anxious. Okay. If you're if you're in captivity in the land, and you know that their God fights for them, that would make you feel anxious too. Amen. <laughs> and we are the redeemed. Woo, come on, tell them about. It. Because of Christ, we have been rescued, redeemed, restored, and forgiven. In Colossians chapter 1, verses 13 and 14, talks about this. Let's go there. Okay, if, if you're if you have your Bible, I'm looking in Colossians chapter 1. Uh, I'll read verse 12 through 14. Giving thanks unto the Father, which has made us meet to be partakers of the inheritance of the saints in light, who has delivered us from the power of darkness and has translated us into the kingdom of his dear Son, in whom we have redemption through his blood, even the forgiveness of sins. He has rescued us from the dominion of darkness and brought us into the, into the kingdom of his Son. As a believer, we are qualified to share in the inheritance of men and women of faith who have gone before us. Amen. We are qualified because of Jesus Christ who has secured our redemption. Our redemption was a legal transaction where Jesus traded his blood for our eternal life and salvation. Amen. 
He purchased our deliverance from bondage from the kingdom of Satan and translated us into his own domain. Now that his, this transaction has taken place, we are rescued, redeemed, restored, and forgiven. We are delivered from sin and introduced to freedom. We no longer have to serve sin. When I first heard that, it didn't make sense to me that uh, being delivered from sin, now we have freedom. Romans chapter 6, verse 19 through 23 explains this. I'm going to go here and read that. It didn't make sense to me because how is it if I'm free, it's sin that allows me to do whatever I want to, so how is it that I would be free if I'm free from sin? In Romans chapter 6, starting in verse 19, it says, I speak after the manner of men because of the infirmity of your flesh. For as you have yielded your members, servants of uncleanness, and to iniquity, unto iniquity. Even so now, yield you your members, as servants of righteousness, unto holiness. For when ye were servants of sin, you were free from righteousness. What fruit have you been in those things, whereof you are now ashamed? For the end thereof of those things is death. But now being made free from sin and, be, and become a servant to God, ye have your fruit unto holiness, and the end is everlasting life. For the wages of sin is death, but the gift of God is eternal. face this eternal death because we are redeemed. Amen. Because we have the salvation. By the giving up of his sinless life sacrificially, Christ announced the power of sin to separate between God and people. Excuse me. God, Christ annuls the power of sin to separate between God and the believer. When Adam sinned in the garden, he sold mankind into slavery. From then till the time of Christ, humanity was held hostage by the kingdom of darkness. It was a hopeless situation because the only, one, the only way to undo what had been done was for a man to redeem or ransom what was lost. James, excuse me, Jesus came to get it all back according to his plan. He saw that there was no one to intervene, so his own arm brought back salvation and his righteousness sustained him. That's what Isaiah said in chapter 59, verses 15 and 16. What Adam did in the garden, Jesus undid on the cross. Adam sold us into sin. Jesus rescued us and brought us to life. Several times, excuse me, several things happen when Christ redeems us. First, he rescues us from sin's domain. This means that we are no longer hostages and this kingdom has no more claim on us. We were brought we, we were brought into God's kingdom, which means we literally belong here. In Genesis, Enoch was translated from the earth into the presence of God. In Genesis chapter 5, verse 24. By faith, Enoch was taken from his life so that he didn't experience death. He could not be found because God took him away. 
before he was taken, he was commended as one who pleased God. That's what Hebrews chapter 11, verse 5 says. Likewise, we have been translated or removed from the previous kingdom and made to stand into God's kingdom. This means we cannot experience eternal death because of sin, and we exist in an eternity, an entirely different realm. We are qualified to be here in this kingdom because Christ paid the ransom that was demanded for the previous kingdom. Secondly, our redemption includes the forgiveness of sin and pardons us from this penalty, from its penalty, which is death. The cleansing agent in the blood of Jesus removes every trace and effect that sin could have on us. We are not only forgiven, but all traces of the guilt and condemnation we feel because of sin have also been removed. That's what Romans chapter 8 verse 1 says. There is therefore now no condemnation to those which are in Christ, who walk not after the flesh, but after the spirit. Lastly, we are restored to the position of God's original intent in creation. Reiterating Colossians 1 through 12, giving thanks to the Father, which has made us meet to be partakers of the inheritance of the saints in light, who has delivered us from the power of darkness and has translated us into the kingdom of his dear Son, in whom we have redemption through his blood, even the forgiveness of sins. This is God's original intent and purpose for us. It was his design from the beginning for us to be part of his family and in his kingdom. Through Christ's redemption, we are once again united with God and his master plan. This redemption is our amazing revelation of God's grace towards us in the person of Jesus Christ. I pray that you have never, I pray that if you have never understood and accept this, you will in this moment understand his great intense love for you and as he demonstrated in person in the person of Jesus Christ. I pray this truth penetrates your heart and produces faith needed to come to him and faith acceptance and find acceptance, forgiveness, wholeness, and restoration. His grace is enough for you. Amen. I told Carmen, I told Carmen, I said, it's a lot different when the pulpit's way down there. It's different when it's up here, okay? Uh, but also, I enjoyed that, Mike, because you stick to the truth Amen. of the gospel. Amen. We get sidetracked with all these other things. That's what we need to stop doing in our, in, in our churches Amen. nowadays, is stop getting sidetracked with all this other teaching, because our life is to revolve around Christ. Amen. Amen. Paul said, I seek to know nothing among you except Jesus Christ and him crucified. Amen. And that's what you reminded me of just now, okay? I enjoyed that message. I want to pray a prayer over everybody in closing, and then I want to, uh, Tammy and Roberta, you come up here, and if anybody has a prayer need, that they want us to pray about. Come on up front and we'll pray with you. Um, but before we do, I'm going to dismiss with this prayer. It's from Ephesians chapter 3. This is a prayer that I've been praying for our church for three months now, right? 
For this reason, I bow my knee before the Father from whom every family in heaven and on earth is named, that according to the riches of his glory, he might grant you to be strengthened with power through his spirit in your inner being, so that Christ would dwell in your hearts through faith, that you being rooted and grounded in love may have strength to comprehend with all the saints what is the breadth and the length and the height and the depth. And to know the love of Christ that passes all knowledge. That you may be filled with all the fullness of God. Now to him who is able to do more abundantly than all that we can ask or think according to the power that worketh in us. To him be glory in the church and in Christ Jesus throughout all generations forever and ever. Amen. I want to thank you guys for coming and worshiping with us this morning. I want to thank Mike for bringing the message. And if you have a prayer need before you leave, like I said, Tammy and, 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 and Roberta are going to be up here, and I'll be up here. And if you have a need, one prayer, want to pray for Teresa before she leaves. I know that. That's the one that's on my heart right now. And if anybody else has a prayer need, just come on up here, and we'll pray for you too. Amen. God bless you guys. <laughs>